So like many of you, I love Heart of Ice. It's such a phenomenally conceptualized and executed episode. Mr. Freeze was reinvented and made into one of the most tragic and layered villains in Batman's rogues gallery. Everything from the exceptional animation, even by this show's standards, to the writing and vocal performances made it a classic. The follow-up to Victor Freeze's arc didn't come for over two years. Admittedly, Deep Freeze is not a story that I would have expected as a sequel, but man do I love it. The main idea is a bit goofy, but still well within the bounds of the show, and it has this twisted, bizarre vibe that makes it unique as it firmly progresses Freeze's character. In some ways, I actually like it better than Heart of Ice for the wild risks it took and pulled off. Gotta give credit to Paul Dini and Bruce Timm for thinking of such a strange tale. When a robot breaks a terrified Mr. Freeze out of Arkham Asylum, Batman and Robin consult their old friend Carl Rossum about the machine's design. Rossum says he once created a similar prototype for theme park mogul Grant Walker, but it's been heavily modified. Walker is revealed to be the one who kidnapped Freeze and has him transported to his new park, Oceana. The now elderly idealist has been infatuated with Victor Freeze's work for years, and even gives the doctor an exact replica of his armored suit, complete with Freeze gun. Due to the accident that transformed his body, Victor's aging process has slowed to a crawl, making him nearly immortal. And that's what Walker is after. More time to complete his work, and essentially live forever. Details are then shared about Grant's grand plan for the world. Oceana is to be the last vestige of hand-picked humanity after a giant ice cannon on top of the park freezes the rest of what's referred to as a violent and hateful world. But first, Walker needs Victor's help to recreate the freezing procedure. The doctor refuses to be involved until Grant discloses that he has Victor's wife, Nora. She's still alive in suspended animation after being thought dead in Freeze's original accident. I have the technology to restore her, my friend. All you have to do is grant my wish. Very well. Let's talk about this episode's evil Walt Disney. Grant Walker is a fascinating villain who I really wish we got more of. Apparently, he did pop up in the Batman Adventures comic series, but I mean in animation or beyond, this guy could have been a long-lasting character. Dini and Tim took so much from Disney's public persona that it's hilarious and brilliant at the same time. The whole concept of an idealized future and the building of a city that embodies positive progress is straight from the man himself. Our experimental prototype city of tomorrow. We call it Epcot. It will never cease to be a living blueprint of the future, where people actually live a life they can't find anywhere else in the world. Everything in Epcot will be dedicated to the happiness of the people who will live, work, and play here. I decided to build a city where good folks can live in peace. A new Garden of Eden, you might say. My world will have no crime, violence, or pain. You can add free will to that list, too. A small price to pay for order. It's such a great idea to twist with a few what-ifs. This is like if Walt had lived for another decade or so and totally lost it. But besides the design of the character and a more sinister take on his general values, my favorite thing they did with him is incorporate the urban legend of Walt cryogenically freezing himself, specifically his head, to be resurrected when medicine advances. Tons of people have had fun with that myth over the years, but the fact that Deep Freeze is a Mr. Freeze episode where the Walt Disney stand-in wants to be frozen to live longer is genius. Look at me, Mr. Freeze. I'm an old man. I've created wonders in my lifetime, but there is still so much to do. The Disney parodies don't even end with Walker himself. The returning Carl Rossum brings up his former employment. I was one of Walker's original visioneers, constructing and programming the animatronic figures he used in his park attractions. Rossum's time as this world's version of an Imagineer was the perfect way to tie him into the story. But his Easter eggs don't stop with just Disney. Greetings, Dynamic Duo! I'm your biggest fan! Yes, we get a malfunctioning toy Batmite in this episode, complete with his own cheery version of the animated series Batman theme. And that's not all. Mr. Mix's Piddalik, Crypto, and even Streaky the Super Cat all make cameos as a few of Rossum's toy designs. The robot that abducts Mr. Freeze even reminds me a bit of the Fleischer Superman robots from the Mechanical Monsters. 
The design isn't the same, but how it captures Freeze by placing him in a compartment in its chest vaguely reminded me of that Superman short. If those weren't enough outside references, the Rossum character is of course still an ode to both voice actor William Sanderson's role in Blade Runner and the 1921 play Rossum's Universal Robots. Plus, Oceana is an obvious reference to George Orwell's 1984. This installment is just packed with little nuggets like that. In the production order, this ended up being the last DCAU directing job for Kevin Altieri. Behind Boyd Kirkland, he was the most prolific director of the original series, and his quality of work speaks for itself. From the very beginning, with On Leather Wings and The Cat in the Claw Part 1, through Two-Face, Heart of Steel, many more, and the last episode produced here, Altieri's legacy is extremely important to Batman the Animated Series, and what would become the DC Animated Universe. Spoilers for the ending from here on out. Batman and Robin eventually infiltrate Oceana, but are captured upon hearing about Walker's dastardly plan. After Freeze aids Walker in becoming like him, frozen in flesh and age, Batman tries to convince Victor to help him stop Grant. However, Freeze only cares about saving his wife. She'll wake up in a dead, frozen world that you helped destroy. You think you're alone now? Wait until she learns the truth. The good that's left inside of Mr. Freeze prevails, as he agrees to end Walker's doomsday plans. He frees the dynamic duo, encases Walker in ice, and begins the destruction of Oceana. As Walker's chosen few escape, Freeze rejects Batman's plea to leave the imploding theme park. Wanting to stay with Nora, he freezes Robin so the Dark Knight won't follow him, and longingly stares at his wife while Oceana is obliterated. Walker is then shown trapped in ice as he falls deeper into the ocean, with the debris of his depraved idyllic society plummeting all around him. Later on, after we see that Dick Grayson is warm, safe, and sound, Freeze and Nora are seen floating in the Arctic, encased inside a large icicle. A grieving victor reaches out for his wife's hand behind the glass as the episode ends. Lost in this review so far are my thoughts on Mr. Freeze himself. He was sympathetic in Heart of Ice, but we see compassion from him here on several occasions. First, when he warns Walker against becoming what he's become. I want to live like this, abandoned and alone. A prisoner in a world you can see but never touch. I'd trade a thousand of my frozen years for your worst day. And later, when Freeze goes back on his word to Walker in order to take him down. This is my dream, my vision. I cheated death to make it real, and you won't stop me. You may live forever, Grand Walker, but your mad dream dies now. Great sequence there. The reveal of Nora through her salvation at the hands of Walker also created some iconic imagery. We would see the culmination of Frieza's arc in the original BTAS and the delayed 1998 feature Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero. However, as most of us know, the character also went on to be incorporated into the new Batman adventures and Batman Beyond. Deep Freeze is one of those installments that feels like a mini-movie, with a big climax that has us asking more questions about if and when Freeze would return. Aside from the villain and all the other references, I just love the design of Oceana and how it's all set up. It's fun to wonder who exactly all those people were who were going to let the world freeze as they became a permanent part of Walker's mad scheme, too. I guess they'd be the equivalent of obsessive Disney Park mega fans being the first to experience a new attraction. Except this attraction is witnessing an apocalyptic new Ice Age. Or maybe they'd all be Club 33 members. Yeah, sounds about right. 